Hello, and welcome to Kink Talks, an experimental program meant to educate. I know that's inversed or backwards to most of you. Sorry about that. This is a live video. You will see it more than likely branded on the different lectures that we're going to have with this. This is going to be a video that we're hoping to invite many people to attend and to watch and to learn from. This is going to be a lecture series that is starting in the summer of 2024. We haven't worked out all the logistics just yet, but we are doing our best to figure out dates and times. We are going to be trying potentially different platforms. Right now, I'm looking at this as being something that we can take questions and kind of bring it to you through a social media platform. There'll be some add-ons and there'll be a way for you guys to interact through the questions and the comments section. Uh, we're going to have a lot of topics. Today's going to be about the basics. If you see me looking down, that's because I'm going to be keeping a close eye on the time. And this is going to help me later chop up these videos into 10 minute TikToks. So every topic that I have, I'm going to try to keep in mind to keep only 10 minutes. So with that, I'm going to restart right now. And uh, this will be where we kind of start chopping it up. So we're going to start right now. Hello and welcome to Kink Talks with Mr. Anderson, that's me, and today we're going to talk about understanding the basics of the lifestyle. This is a part one, and if you're watching this on TikTok, this, there are more than probably one parts to the just the part one as we'll be breaking this into 10 minute videos. Kink Talk is a lecture on kink presented by me, Mr. Anderson. Mr. Anderson has been into kink since he was 18 and has written about it, taken part in kinky activities, and has studied it for over 30 years. What this series will entail, well, we're trying to educate. It's become very clear that the basics of uh, the kinky lifestyle, as it is, has been under some bad advice. So we're going to go all the way back to the beginning, and we're going to make a series about things that are important, not just to me, but to you. So we're going to be trying to, the hope is, of course, is for the, this educational experience will make people safer. If I can teach people what is damaging to other people, what I can teach people the, the limits, the boundaries, the importance of those, if I can teach people all the different aspects of our lifestyle, maybe we can eliminate some of the actual abuse and consent violations that happen. And we're going to be taking a unique approach. We're not just going to be telling submissives how to protect themselves. We'll do that. We're also going to be teaching the potential consent violators and consent violators themselves the damage that they are doing to other people and the damage that they are potentially spreading. And we're going to talk about those things in, in this lecture series. And we really hope that we can eliminate abuse, consent violations by doing this series. Now this series also has the goal for the vanilla world of actually educating vanilla people. When I wrote the book that this actual tank top is based on, Barbara Unleashed, one of the things that surprised a lot of my vanilla friends was the fact that there was so much that went into how we played. And with that in mind, we want to actually expand that and give the vanilla audience. We're allowed to be educational on TikTok, but I can't guarantee this is where we'll stay. TikTok, the platform itself, is in danger. So these will also be posted on YouTube as a full series. And we'll probably run the video on one side and have our logo either, either side of it. And again, this will be our logo. But we'll try to keep them to no more than 10-minute videos here on TikTok. But... On YouTube, you'll be able to experience the longer set video. Most of the times I'll be recording this from um, an indoor location, obviously, because I want to be able to really concentrate. And I won't really be answering questions in this first part. I hope to answer questions in the end or at the end of the videos, but also in the comments section when possible. 
And we will even have different ways to communicate with you, including a Discord that you can now find by going to the main profile on TikTok or on YouTube, we will mention it. Join the Discord today and have the conversations with us, ask your questions, and, well, we can just make it so we can all have conversations with each other and improve this show through your feedback. So, it's a lot of goals. It's going to be a lot of energy. And I actually hope, just to give you an idea, what I'd like to do is I'd like to do this show and then run a in-community event, my local community, my most local community, and that might change as I'm moving soon, but bring it to the local community, let people sit down and have discussions after watching the video. That way no one has to sit through, as a group, 45-minute lecture and then start a whole longer conversation with questions and back and forth. Instead, we can watch the 45-minute video, gather, and then communicate with each other what we feel and how we feel about it. With that in mind, I'd like to get on to today's episode. Today on Kiki Talk, we're understanding the basics of the lifestyle. We're going to go over some topics and we're going to talk about some questions. I actually recently did this live event on the Zoom, and one of the things that people were worried about was being recorded. So for full transparency, this is being recorded on TikTok. It's going to be shared on YouTube. So please be mindful if you are going to make a comment. I'll try not to read names of comments because I don't think that the live recap actually shows everything that's strolling, scrolling at the bottom. And if it does, we will uh, deal with it as it comes up. We might also do a live on a YouTube or we might do a Zoom as well. So stay tuned for more of that. Again, we're going to go where the content lets us go because this is inf important information. I also want to stress that one of the things that I want to accomplish is to be able to get to the point to be able to do TED Talks about this. <clears throat> which is why I actually chose the name Kink Talks. I kind of want to get the attention of TED Talks because I think these are important conversations to have with the entire world so we can kind of dispel some of the misconceptions, show how much we take safety, education, and the well-being of those who participate into our planning, our play, our lifestyle itself. This is all something that's very serious, and I know there'll be a whole debate about the safe thing that always happens. When I say safe, understand what I mean is being a planned individual and getting to all of your news. Well, what is new? New is the new acronym. It means needs, expectations, and wants. Being able to land it. Does someone want bruises? Maybe. Does someone want a broken arm or leg? Probably not. Does someone want to go on an ambulance ride because you dropped them in, in suspension? No. So we can plan to be safe and we can plan. I always say this and it's the bus driver metaphor. The top, the dom, the person running the scene often is the bus driver. And before you get on the bus, there's a bus map. That must, bus map has been your negotiation. You've you, as the person having things done to you, have picked the path of the bus and you know the stop you're getting off at. But at any time, remember, you can call red and make the, the bus ride come to an end. But if you've discussed your needs, your expectations, your wants with the dom top who's driving the bus, you should be able to get there if they have the experience and knowledge to do so. And remember, while negotiating, definitely ask your bus driver about the particular risks involved in the different stops that you want to temporarily stop at until you get to your final destination, the expectations you have, what you're willing to go through, including bruising and marking, and also what you need from it. So I'm going to stress that and stress that and stress that again. And we'll be using some of these terms. The good news is we're about to launch an actual uh Kinctionary, our own version of a Kinctionary, and it will be free for all to use and you'll be able to find it. As a matter of fact, if you go to barbarunleash.com now, it opens up a Google Drive file that, believe it or not, is going to take you to a literal Kinctionary. So you guys will be able to see all of that information as well. We've been working hard on that and can't wait to get that. Um, 
we have a great editor working behind that. I'm so thrilled to be bringing that energy to it. So we're going to be talking about a lot today. Like I said, this will become a longer form YouTube video. Uh, it'll be something that we show um, to the community members, but we also want to go beyond just a single community and really act, interact with the whole community. And some of the things on today's show will, of course, be things that I have seen come from the community, questions come from my community, but also things that people have asked me here on TikTok, here on uh, other sites, because I'm not even allowed to say one of the other ones. It's, it's the one about life and fat and it has a dot com, as I always say. So with that, we're going to move on to our next area for today. And I, it's going to be annoying for everyone who's... We're going to be uh, working on a list of things, and you're going to hear me say a lot. Um, you're going to hear me say a lot, the name of the show. So... Stay tuned for that. All right, so questions and topics, and you're going to see me look down sometimes because of breaking points. So with breaking points, I might give a pause just because I'm going to break this up. Welcome to Kinky Talk with Mr. Anderson. Understanding the basics of the lifestyle. This is the part one. We're going to, for this module of our series and particularly this lecture we're going to be talking about advocacy for all advocacy for all is one of those things that every community kind of needs a way to help people who feel like something has gone wrong uh, it's a way to make people feel less alone if they feel like they've been taken advantage of or if they've had their consent violated. So obviously we wanna put people in charge to actually be part of finding a way to move forward for the person who feels like they have had their consent taken advantage of or lack of consent more than likely. And we're going to be talking about in this particularly the ideas of what we can do. And of course, you need someone to kind of, in your communities, be a, a sounding voice, someone who will ask the hard questions. A lot of times, this comes down to asking questions. And despite what some people may think, you don't need to have anyone witness what happened. If you get a good um, advocate, they can sit down with both parties involved, not necessarily at the same time. This is all going to depend on how people feel, and just ask questions. And by asking questions a lot of times, it becomes very clear what we're dealing with, to be honest. And with that in mind, an advocate should also be able to talk to you about what you would want moving forward. They could take the information and they can tell all parties involved exactly how they see it from an outside point of view. The results of having someone advocate for you should be that the community is made aware because we're going to talk about this in a, a, an upcoming module that we need to make sure that the community is made aware of people who are potentially dangerous. And I know people are going to be worried about the entire, oh my God, what about false al allegations and all that? With an advocacy program and an advocate, more than likely an advocate will say, in this case, I think that there was a misunderstanding between the parties. I do think that there was um, a consent violation, but I think it was bad due to bad negotiation. Or they might come up and say, no, this was someone who just did not listen. And they decided that they were going to be the way they wanted to be and not care about the potential for harm that they've put out. And I do want to just put this on before we go any further. Understand that when you violate someone's consent, it, it stays with them potentially forever. It becomes something that they are going to have bad dreams about. 
They're going to think about it every so often, and it can even make them have traumatic experiences, triggers, and it be something that they can never, ever fully feel safe with anyone. Those are the the costs of it. So if you're someone who has violated someone's consent and you don't think it's a big deal, I, I cannot stress this enough. It is the biggest deal in the world. You're harming someone permanently. You, people don't get over that. They might not show you, but it's always in their mind that someone did not listen to them. And it is never the person's fault when someone does something they're not supposed to do. And when I'm talking about advocacy and I'm talking about miscommunication, we do have to leave room where sometimes, maybe during our negotiations, there was a misunderstanding. Now, those misunderstandings aren't always what most people think they are. Inserting something into someone is rarely a misunderstanding. Touching a place you were never allowed to touch is barely a misunderstanding. A lot more times the misunderstandings are limited to the amount of pain, the potential marks left after play, potentially things that were said to a person or how the actual, we'll call it a punishment, has been used, the action has been used, or the implement has been used. So those are finer points and that definitely, trust me, we're going to go over negotiations and we're going to go over a lot of things in this bigger series to help keep everyone on the same page and everyone safe. So an advocate, like I would consider myself an advocate and have already done advocating for some people. And in the end of the day, the biggest problem was the first person who involved themselves and made a lot of mistakes by especially not asking the right questions or questions at all and rushing to judgment. So the final part of this, as I stress this, is make sure that you are always using an advocate who asks questions first before rendering a verdict. As we build things, we'll understand this, but with the advocacy program that you build up, make sure your community has a set um, placard, a set place where rules for the community are listed it would be really good if everyone had that. So we're gonna move on to our next topic for today. Now, I'm just gonna take a quick break. I do see some of you making comments. I will try to get to the comments at the end, but for now, we're just gonna take a quick pause and then I'm gonna kick up again. We might put commercials in between this so I can cut them up later. Like I'll hold something up to show something off, maybe a place to buy something. All right. Welcome back to King Talk with me, Mr. Anderson. I'm Mr. Anderson. Let's try that again. That's <laughs> when we break up the module. People seeing the full video will see the blooper. All right. <clears throat> Hello, and welcome back to King Talk with Mr. Anderson. That happens to be me. And this is Understanding the Basics of the Lifestyle, Part 1. We are in the module right now of Hard Limits. And this comes from me posting a picture for a local community gathering to actually start this entire thing. And I wrote hard limits. One, consider this a no that you never talk about again. Do not bring it back up. Doing so, doing the action, I mean, not bringing it up, but uh, doing this action may require you to go to prison without permission and you don't have it. Something to that effect. And, um... It is one of those things that I wanted to talk about because someone questioned me about that. Well, they didn't understand it. And it's a fair question in all honesty. And as a matter of fact, I wanna, I feel like I should read it word for word. So we're going to do that. And you'll have to excuse me, I write so many things. It is just sometimes impossible for me to remember my exact wording, but. What I can tell you is this, hard limits are one of those things, once they are established, they are now a boundary, a boundary that should not be pressed, should not be violated, should not be passed beyond. A boundary that is indefinite. Now, if you have a dynamic with someone, you should already know this, but I'll bring it up just for the record, you should be having check-in moments. This is basically where you get together, you pause the dynamic, 
no matter your honorifics, so you can honestly talk about how things are going. This is a moment where you could bring up a hard limit, just as simply as this. If you were a, a, a top, a dominant, the person in charge of the dynamic, as it were, you could just turn around and say, hey, listen, let's go over some of your hard limits. If you want to talk more about them, we'll talk more about them. If you want them to just continue to be your hard limits, cool, I checked in, now I know. So, and this is how it was written, and this is where the question came from. Hard limits. Not only is it a no, never speak of it again in front of the playmate. If you still do it to them, you belong in jail. Now, when I wrote that, this was for people playing and establishing something. During the recheck, which what I say to everyone is this. In a dynamic, no longer how long you've been together, I suggest having a review every six months. Every six months, it's good to sit down and have a conversation. If you're in a brand new dynamic, I would suggest doing it monthly for the first six months. After six months, do it 90 days and then 90 days, and that'll hit you at your one year. At the one year, you go back over, we go a little deeper, look over any paperwork that you've had. I do not suggest contracts. I think contracts are the wrong way to go about this. I have a system that if you're interested, please ask me about, and I'd be happy to talk about it, but not right now. The end result is you should be keeping track of these things. The best way is to have the paperwork, show that someone filled it out, and then go back over it. Don't make a contract. Contracts, first off, are always written to the favor of one person. No contract ever goes for both. You leave things out of contracts that you don't realize, including if you're going to be a switching couple. Because if you write it as a dominant and make everything in power to you, when you switch, you suddenly don't have it. And then, finally, when it comes to this review, really get into it. Really ask, have the conversations, get into the idea. And yes, ask about all the things that are listed and see what has changed. Because people will change. When I write not to ask again, it's because someone's established they don't want it. Now, as the person who sets up a hard limit, you're always welcome to walk that back. To take it back and to say, well, you know what? I know I was against it at one point but I would actually like to do that now or try that right now or talk about it right now. But as the Dom, the top, the person driving the bus that it's, we started with all the way in the beginning of this lecture, remember your goal is to drive the bus the way that they told you the route should be. You get to determine the speed of the bus, how you steer and how you avoid obstacles. That's all you as the top and Dom when you've earned that respect and you're given that way to put it together, but always follow Especially with speed, make sure you're making, you know, the speed limit of your partner because they're also going to set some of those. And by going over them, you could be violating consent. So be careful. Never go too fast and always use safety um, protocols and ways to get out. I don't suggest safe words anymore. I suggest the safe, the safe light system or safe word light system. We're still working on exactly how we're going to name that. Basically, the, the red light, uh, the green light, red light game that you played as a kid. So use green for go, yellow for slow down and talk to me, red to stop. And you can add other colors to really interact. Never forget that putting the fingers in the palm, make sure someone squeezes your hand. So these are all very important things. And these are things that have to be discussed and negotiated. So hard limits are one of those things that you don't negotiate because they're established as preset fixed boundary points in your dynamic and play. All right. Moving on to our next module, just going to denote the time. Welcome back to Kinky Talk with me, Mr. Anderson. We're going over and understanding the basics of the lifestyle. And right now in this module, we're going to talk about speaking up. This is one of the hardest things I have to talk to you about in this entire module today, because speaking up in your community, and this is just community based. So if you're not in a community and not here for this, this wouldn't be the video. Please go on to the next module. This is community based only. Now, speaking up when someone has hurt you into your local community, when someone has violated your consent or done something that needs to be known for other people, speaking up can be a powerful thing to stop it from happening. However, speaking up comes with costs. I have paid the cost of speaking up both in my comic book uh, industry, uh, where 
I am a creator and I've created things and I've stood against abusive creators. A lot of people didn't like me standing up and they were abusive to women and I paid a price for that. One I was willing to pay, but there was a price. In my uh, community as of right now that I'm part of, I've paid a price for talking about how someone violated my consent by spanking me at an event where it would be the first time that I was bottoming in public and they ruined that for me along with some other people. As a matter of fact, I had four instances that night. Three gave me a very nice apology and one to this date has gone on to lie about me, to try and ruin my reputation, has done everything to stop the truth from coming out. And in that time, I have seen more people be affected by this same person and it is very upsetting to me. I did handle it immediately, telling the person they weren't allowed to. And at the very, very beginning of this lecture, we talked about the danger of kind of how abuse can be spread. When someone has their consent violated, they no longer respect other people's consent as much. And in this occasion, someone told me, well, it's happened to me, so it's okay for me to do. They took something that they happened to them as an excuse to do it to other people. And this is something that is not rare, sadly, and can and does happen in communities. So speaking up not only puts a kick me sign, people can come after you because the first thing we do is discredit the people who have consent violations or worse to protect especially popular people. It is heartbreaking, but it, happen it happens and it's happening right now in not just my community, but other communities. People do this on purpose. They do this to protect themselves. And then it always comes down to how many. And I've been asking my community that for, little, for at least a couple months now. How many people are gonna have to get hurt by this one person till we take it seriously? Sadly, they haven't reached that mark, though I've been told there are now seven people who've been affected by the behaviors of just one person. This is beyond concerning. But me speaking up about it when I had to, when I was pushed, has only caused me to have people lie about me, to make up stories, to question my integrity for no reason other than I'm trying to warn them. And this is what's crazy. And I, I want to put this in the this, this training module and I want people to understand it. There is no advantage to admitting that someone has violated your consent for the most part. There isn't. There simply is not. Can someone be lying about it? Potentially. Can someone be doing that to get someone in trouble as revenge because they had a bad breakup? Possibly. But I'm going to say this, especially when it comes to our lifestyle. It is rare that something like that happens from what I've seen. Maybe in the vanilla world, sure. But there are too many things that we do in our culture with safe words, with all that, that we would see something like that happen as a false accusation. Because again, if we have an advocacy, advocacy program or advocates in our community and they ask questions, the stories will more than likely fall apart. It's just the reality. So we, we need to stop worrying about that. And we're going to talk about the way that we're training and talking and teaching seems to be more to protect people from a, an instance of someone saying something that didn't happen, of trying to protect people from a lie, a, uh, a false accusation. And instead of teaching people not to violate consent and how to not do those things, and that would, that has to be a focus that we have to change in the entire community. So when someone does speak up, they're not speaking up alone. They're being listened to, they're being helped, and they're being encouraged and taken care of and shown that they're cared about. I had a situation about me, but I also watched two very bad situations go down and handled absolutely horribly. One was going to have someone promoted into being a community leader and began me down the road of me hating the term community leader. Because again, how can you be a leader to me with my kinks? You're not involved with them. All I'm doing is going to hang out with like-minded people 90% of the time. I don't need you to lead anything. And we're going to go over how bad education can get and the dangers of bad education in these modules coming up. So stay tuned. Make sure to watch the next ones. But it takes a lot and it costs a lot to stand up and say that person did something to me, especially when they're popular. 
So we need to stop and listen to them, understanding that in this world we live in, when people whistleblow on consent violators in our lifestyle, they're going to be treated shitty. And we need to own that, and we need to make sure that that stops in our communities. All right. Hello and welcome back to Kinky Talk with me, Mr. Anderson. In this module of the Understanding the Basics of the Lifestyle, Part 1, we're going to be talking about those who want power and no one owns BDSM. So it was an interesting thing. I had made a comment recently on a social media platform about how people were drinking too much of the Kool-Aid and they were acting foolish. This prompted, well, silly conversations, as many of them can be and often are. The reason I'm even bringing it up to you is the person said, well, we see those who want power. And it was a, an interesting thing to say to me, especially considering this person has done nothing but try to act like the Lord and Savior of the lifestyle, but they believe only their opinions are the right way to go. So, I want to talk about that. Those that want power. They want power generally, from what I've seen, for one of three reasons. And we're going to go over them in another module, but I'm only going to bring up one for this module. The biggest reason is often because they're abusive. I hate to say it, but they are. There are a lot of people who are abusive. And they want power so they can get away with things, they can make things the way they want them, so they can groom people, they can collect people, they can control the narrative, they can control what happens, because if they can limit voice, remember we were talking about speaking up, and how my, my reputation was ruined back in the module about speaking up, well, we kind of go full circle back into that, because when you are telling the truth about someone violating your consent, a lot of times what they'll do is try to ruin your reputation. Say something about you. Maybe share something that you shared with them. Because a lot of times the people who violate our consent are people that we are close to. We don't want that. We don't want that situation to happen. We want to make sure that that doesn't happen. And the way that we can do that is to ensure that... Well, I mean, there's no other way to put this, but... We need to listen to how people are acting. We need to see them. We need to acknowledge when we hear the rumor mill, and we have to be able to ask other people what they heard. We're going to talk about what community should be coming up, but it, the one thing it shouldn't be is owned by anyone. When I say no one owns BDSM, I truly mean that. We gather not to have someone tell us how to be. We don't gather to be gaslit or told how to live our lives. We're just trying to hang out with like-minded people that we can't talk about things with. We want to talk about how using whips and chains are fun. We want to talk about how, you know, doing a kidnapping scene can be very exciting. Um, we want to also talk to people of their experiences and learn from them. And we're going to talk more about that in the community in a minute. But one of the things that we don't want is for people to tell us how we should be who we should be, and act like they somehow are doing us a favor. I hate when someone goes, well, if someone else wants to do this, yes, someone else should do it. Go away. That's my answer. If you're going to go to guilt tactics like a child about how hard it is that you're putting on these things, then leave. You should be doing it because you want to be around like-minded people. And if you have any other alternative motive, uh, motive, you're seeking some sort of power and advantage. And, well, that's dangerous. We're going to talk more about that coming up. But before we do, two other examples of people seeking a power. Sadly, this comes with some educators who only put on classes to meet new people and take advantage of a pool of growing people. They'll put on a class for something, 
People will show up and then they will pick who they want. Very often, classes, remember, attract new people. And we're going to talk about the dangers of new, being a new person in the community in just a few minutes in another module. But for right now, we need to understand that that is very dangerous. When educators use classes as a way to fulfill fantasies and use people because they're not going to other places to earn it. They're trying to use what they're doing as a way to get ahead. And we all know the ethical dilemmas of college professors dating their students. Consider it the same. And the other thing I want to talk about is people trying to gain power is trying to also be able to keep voices away. It's one thing to talk down about a person, but if they're running events and they start to get other people to blackball people from events, it means that no one will be talking about their actions. And I've seen this where it just delays the obvious. Eventually someone gets hurt and then everyone's like, oh my God, how could this happen in the community? And the truth is we allow it to happen by our ignorance, our silence, and us not listening. And we need to address that and take that very serious as a greater community than just the smaller ones and realize how often that is so dangerous for everyone involved. All right, so I'm gonna take a quick, just a quick drink break and we're gonna get on to the next one. Welcome back to King Talk with me, Mr. Understand, Mr. Anderson. Uh, understanding the basics of the lifestyle part one. This is the module known as community education, support, advice, warnings, but not about your ego. So to be clear, a community should be about educating, supporting its members and giving advice. It should be a communal conversation and people should have the ability to talk about things and talk about when bad things are happening and abuse is happening and also teaching techniques should also be about giving a heads up about events i wouldn't go to this event because i heard there was a, a violation what it shouldn't be is people trying to leverage and we talked a little bit about this about the power in um the those who want power in our communities but we're going to go a little into this about warning about egos, because there are people who are trying to trade favors. We had an incident in my community where they were advertising drug use at an event at a Florida, um, I wouldn't call it a dungeon, but an, an event place. Now, of course, this could bring the attention of authorities, and if you've never been part of a police raid, I don't suggest it. Your name can be taken, and if a reporter finds wind of it, they can actually tell the world about the people involved, especially if you're arrested, because they can arrest you but not press charges and let you go. It is ridiculously dangerous to be part of a police raid if you're worried about being outed. But there went some of these quote unquote community leaders, quote unquote uh, educators, just talking about other events. And they, I, I had a, a moment to discuss this with one of them. And their attitude was, well, I just tell people where, where the events are, which is not true because they pick and choose which events they, they talk about. And if you're going to be telling a community about something, you're making them aware about it, it's your responsibility to tell them if there's a danger. If someone has gone through a consent violation at the venue, you should also be talking to them about whether or not there has been problems there. Or if they're advertising something, it'd be problematic. Now, this same person then bragged, well, nothing happened. And I can't stress this enough. Nothing that you knew happened. You don't know when the police are checking up on us and they should be checking up on us. Not for the reasons you think, but to make sure that we aren't doing something. And we're gonna talk about drugs and consent coming up in a module very soon. And I'll wait till then to get there. But for right now, I will tell you this. If your community is not focusing on education, supporting its members, giving advice to its members, and talking about kinky related things, but instead, and I've seen this, where they talk about their dynamics as a clique or a group in the middle of a community thing, and they turn it into their stuff, there's nothing uglier than that. I've seen so many people be so disgusted because instead of it being a community, people make it about them and that you should be cool enough to be around them. And it's the surefire way to kill a community. That's where ego comes in. 
And I've seen some events go down to having like five people that aren't somehow involved, if not less. I've seen events where there are two people that showed up and I was one of the two and the rest of them were just all their friends. They might as well just gathered and gone to Burger King for the day. And this is how they pro uh, project themselves in the community and how they make people feel. And they're not smart enough to get that. And it's very disheartening. So we're going to move on to our next module now. And if you guys have questions about this, please send them to us on our Discord, which you can now find by going to barbaraunleashed.com. I'll see you at the next one. Just a little bit of a stretch. I'm going to go at 326. I want to thank you all. I did see some... Um, I have seen people make comments. I'm going to try at the very end to get to all the comments. Uh, I'm just trying to get through this and... For those watching this on YouTube, we're just running through it and then we're going to try to deal with it. And we've, I've seen a lot of people come in. I thank you all. A lot of you have stayed to watch for a good amount of time. I know this is long. I hope you join us on the YouTube channel that we have. Um, I think that uh, the YouTube, and I'll put it in that same folder with Barbara Unleashed because we want to do that. I think I turned it to, it was Comic Book Advocates, but I think I made it the Kinky Educator. I, I can actually look while we're on a break so you guys can know, and I'll just change the time. Bear with me one second, please. I have to switch. And on YouTube, you're, you're looking now and being like, well, I know where channel you're on. I'm right here. I'm sorry. I am sorry. It's actually asking if I want to do a channel. I'm like, no, I don't want to do a channel. All right. For some reason, I can't find the YouTube there. And it's always when I'm... Okay. Luckily, you can't see a screenshot right now because I wound up on a site that would get me in trouble on TikTok. <laughs> Not even on purpose. For some reason, it just got there. Okay, so here we go. So it's at Comic Book Advocates, but I'm going to more than likely change it to maybe Mr. Anderson, the advocate. Either way, it'll be in that file. So you can go back to that. All right, here we are. All right. Let's change our time. It'll be 28. All right, here we go. Welcome back to Kink Talk. A lecture series that we're going to be doing. My name is Mr. Anderson, and of course, we're doing it right now. And we're at the module for understanding the basics of the lifestyle entitled, We Need Educators, Not Parrots. What do I mean by that? Let's get into it. So I'm doing this right here, and I will show you the notes I have. Topics and a logo. I can talk to any one of you about any of these topics without referring to notes. And that doesn't mean notes are necessarily bad. Notes can be a good thing for certain presenters. Don't get it twisted. What I mean are the people who show up to do these things give opinions versus facts. Most of what I'm giving you are facts. These are things that have happened. These are things that are talked about. These are things that have been really going on and I'm giving you solutions that actually work. I'm not often giving you an opinion. These are time tested, discussed, but there are some educators who will call themselves educators who shouldn't, who have just learned something and are parroting back what they've taught to you in almost a telephone game way. And because of that, because they don't understand the nuances, and this is especially dangerous for the people who are too new to understand it, and I would say that for the most part, and there will be exceptions, and I know exceptions to this rule, mind you, I think anyone without five years of experience being part of a community, being part of an educator, being part of a bigger conversation, would, would definitely fall under uh, this parrot because they haven't been around enough to see things go wrong sometimes or they really didn't study it. They've only heard a few things a few times and now they think that they're the uber god to be DSM. Since the creation of BDSM, which only happened, by the way, as a term in 1991, many things have changed just about that acronym. But now you have people coming into a generation and they think they get it, but they haven't really talked to people. I find this to be, especially when it comes to the conversation of consent, a very big problem. 
And I think people don't always get it because they haven't been affected by it. I think that's a privilege. I think some people will never know how it is to be touched by someone without permission, to have someone do an action to you without permission, or to harass you and do awful things to you. There was someone who identified it as a community leader who once told me I had to kiss them to leave an event. This was one of the most disgusting things I've ever experienced in my life, and I've had people stick their hands down my pants without permission while I was passed out. I've also had people grab at my responsive organ, if you would, um, to see if I was attracted to them and found out I wasn't. So I have had my share of issues. I just want to make sure that we understand that educators who are giving bad information can lead to these problems because they can understand it. They'll stumble and they don't really know what they're saying 90% of the time. They watch someone's video for five minutes and think they can run out there. They can't talk about the nuances. They can't talk about the effects on other people. They can only give you their point of view in that particular moment and nothing more. Not just what they've been told. They are the most dangerous educators. And let me, let me tell you right now, I have solidly probably been to over 500 classes when it comes to the knowledge of BDSM. Over 500. Easy. That's not even a challenge for me. I have hosted conversations like this well over 100 to 200 times. I have a thousand hours of on online screen time being a host and being a voice. I have done countless amounts of videos, both advocating for BDSM and also comic books and autism and mental health issues. So this is not new to me. But you know what is new? The information that we learn when I read studies. Look, there was a recent study that said that 808 people in the last 10 years, well, I think it was less than 10, have lost custody battles, have lost their children and or a job because of their involvement in BDSM. And this was put out by an actual agency that tracks it. I can't think of it right now. I really wish I, I knew it. It's like, um, it's about sexual protection. And I'm drawing a blank. Um, but they put out this, this information. And mind you, that's just what they captured. That's just what they found out. That's just what hit their radar. I would double that number. And just imagine the risk. Just being kinky can cost you your child. How awful and how horrifying that would be. So, we need to understand that education, it needs to be performed by someone who actually understands the topic, can explain it, and hasn't just read a handout and now thinks they get it. Someone who's talked to people, someone who has interacted, someone who has the pulse of the community. It's just that simple. When we have new people doing it, they're doing a telephone game, and now, remember, they're teaching someone new. So they're taking information and a lot of times you can tell they don't quite get it. And I can give you an example. Years and years ago, when we taught about tying someone up, we always talked that with the first couple times you did it, you limited the amount of time that someone was in actual bondage for the first couple times. And this is because they're not used to certain things yet. And they're not used to identifying them, being able to say, especially going numb. Some people will sit there being uh, going numb and then they'll have things like wrist drop. This used to be taught a lot, and I've noticed a divide now. And I went to a class, and I said, well, hey, how long do you tell someone that they should be tied up, and is there a limit you give to people? They're like, oh, no, it doesn't matter. Yes, it does. And there's ways to check in, and this was someone who had learned it, passed down. Now, I'm not the only one who says it, but it is one of those things that we're forgetting to teach. The amount that you are bound, especially with certain kind of bindings, is very dangerous. For example, having your arms up for too long can actually lead to asphyxiation if it's too tight. Having some uh, restrictive uh, breathing due to ropes can actually lead to someone passing out, if not worse, and having compression issues, depending on where the ropes are, or could actually, if it's on the stomach, can lead to actual digestive issues and or bruising internally for too long while struggling to breathe. Suspension, the, the tally of people getting hurt by suspension only goes up by the year. It does not matter how safe you try to make suspension. Eventually, you're going to get injured. The 
particulars of it, everyone gets something from it over the, a long enough time period. So it is a risk. And this has to be for your risk profile, of course. But we need educators that understand that and can give you the warning so you are educated and you can play. We don't need educators that stand up and say awful things like, if you get abused, you didn't vet right. That if someone passes out during play or are unresponsive, they're just really into it. These are real things I've heard personally. And there is still awful going on out there. So we need better educators and we need to hold educators accountable. As for me, I suggest everyone goes out and reads everything they can, study everything they can. That's what I do. I watch videos of people I don't like. I go to classes where I could teach it better, but I still show up because I want to hear what people are saying and I can watch trends of how things are being taught. So keep yourself tuned in and you'll never be surprised by the trends that are coming. And make sure that when you see an educator who's struggling, talk to the people in your community about it and voice your concerns. Bad educators, and I know this from my stint in retail where I was a manager for decades, that when someone learns something the wrong way, it is very difficult to untrain them the wrong way. It's very easy for them to pick up things that are bad and very hard for them to let them go. Retraining someone takes you to stand over them 20 to 30 times before they will learn the new way because they learned it a different way. So let's make sure we're also not vetting, but showing up to educational classes and raising our hands and making sure that we hold our educators, especially those of us who know, ask the hard questions, don't sit in silence. As long as you are willing and willing to stand up, and again, that's a choice, but if you have the energy and the ability, please stand up and call out people who are dangerous. I come to somewhere where I am and I'll buy you lunch so you could tell me that story. Make Mr. Anderson proud of you. We're going to be moving on to our next topic. I hope to see you at our next segment. All right, where are we at? Time-wise, 336. You guys must be getting tired of me saying this, but I have to. Welcome back to Tinky. You guys get all the fun stuff on YouTube and those watching me live. Tinky was actually a dog of mine. Sadly passed away uh, last year. Very heartbreaking. So let's, let's do this again. My name is Mr. Anderson. Welcome back to Kinky Talk. Understanding the basics of the lifestyle. This is the part one. We're going to go into our next lecture packet, our next segment, if you would. And we're going to be talking about why saying no is so scary. So this is one of those things that came up in my community. I had been out of town and there was a consent negotiating class going on. And one of the things that people came to me and came to me very quickly to talk about was the person putting on the class said that if you can't say no in this lifestyle, you do not belong. And I wanted to address that. Now, I'm not saying that a submissive isn't responsible for communication. That's not true. Um, as a person who's been playing with people for decades now, I need feedback. I need to know what's going on. And I need to understand the reactions and also things that are going wrong. I need feedback. Communication is key. I don't need them to say no. As a matter of fact, no can be a dangerous word in play outside of negotiation. During negotiation, you can talk about no, but when you're in play, you're under pressure, you're feeling a lot of things, you might not be paying attention. And let's be honest, a lot of times someone will say no, 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 and they really want something to happen. Let's talk about the other side of it. We're raised to obey. Like it or not, you have a boss, you have family members, you've had teachers where you were told you couldn't say no. And there are people out there who have paid a price for telling someone no. And it is very scary when you have to say no to someone who's not getting the hint or no to someone that you don't want to let down or no to someone that you're trying to impress. These are social pressures we do not consider. So we have to consider that as the dominance. This is us driving the bus again. Go all the way back to this lecture's beginning. Understand that when we are driving that bus of the scene, because we've charted it out, we've negotiated, we understand what we're doing, 
we also have to pay attention to our passenger. We have to make sure that our passenger on this bus ride is okay. And if they're having trouble communicating, we have to be able to stop. Again, going back to putting your hands in their fingers, teaching them right away, first time you play with them. If I stick my hands here, squeeze if everything's okay. If you don't squeeze, I'll get the point. And even if they do like a weird light squeeze, that's a time to pause play. Don't have to untie them if they're tied. You don't have to completely stop. You have to literally stop and go, hey, I can tell something's wrong. If you can't communicate, I'm going to end the scene right now and we'll discuss it. I'm not mad at you. Those powerful words have to be said to, com to create open and amazing communication. I'm not mad. You're not disappointing me. There's nothing wrong. We can stop here. Encourage that to make them not afraid to say no. Very often when something happens, and I've heard this from people, and this is tops and doms have to own this, and I'm sure I've done it in a minute where the first reaction is like, you're kind of bummed, you're having fun, you're in the middle of it. I get it, that's human. And it's a valid feeling, but you have to remind yourself that you're playing with a human being, a human being that needs to express, to understand, to live in the moment, and, and they're feeling all of these things, especially as a submissive will feel more than a dominant because they have things being done to them. So we have to realize that while the scene might be ending, it's our responsibility, our duty, it is all about play, that we protect our partners in play. And that goes both ways, but at this time, if they're not communicating, we have to communicate for them. We have to understand that someone might not want to say no because they don't want to disappoint you. Their arm, they can't feel their arm. For some reason, their wrist is dead. But they don't want to disappoint you because you haven't built the capital with them that allows them to be able to say that. And it might not be your fault because they didn't tell you they struggled to say no, but it's still your responsibility to be part of that. Understanding that no is a phrase that they are afraid to say to some people because they don't want to disappoint. They don't want to hurt anyone and they don't want to be hurt for saying no. And I'm not talking necessarily physical, though it could be. I'm talking just the look in their your face when they look at you and they feel like they're not a good enough submissive, they're not a good enough bottom. These are things. These are things that we need as tops to consider. So instead of saying no, let's use red. Red is something commonly known in all of the dungeons, all of the play parties, all of the spaces. Red is a word that can be said in front of strangers and they know exactly what's going on. They can pay attention and know that if a top isn't stopping at red, that they are allowed to tag in and make sure it happens, that the scene stops. Red is something that you don't normally say in a, in a scene. I'd like the red ball gag. You know they're talking about something, but just red blurted out, you know something's wrong. Again, back to our color-coded system. Green for go, yellow slow down, check in, red stop. And you can do purple for... Uh, emotional issues, you can do golden for not only what you're doing is great, but keep going, you're in a groove. You know, you can add your own special ones. Blue, of course, is a medical condition or a medical issue. So there are ways to be part of a bigger conversation. There are ways to encourage back and forth that doesn't ruin a scene, that allows things to keep going, that are hidden messages. Uh, and, um, you know, you can use your, you can ah, absolutely, amazingly make it so you can send messages. And someone, while I was recording this and live, someone said to me, uh, we do purple harder, please. And there you go. See, it's hidden communication in there. And it doesn't have to be no. Because when we say no, we feel like we're doing something to someone. But when you're saying red, you're reacting to something. And it changes the mentality. So let's stop saying you can't say no and start finding a way for them to communicate better. And let's get rid of no because no is something in, whether it's negotiation or it's in the middle of playing, no has a connotation that some people don't want to betray. I'm being submissive. I want to obey. I want to be someone who listens. That's, that's, a, that's what people really want. So let's empower them to give them words that they don't feel like they're doing anything wrong but being part of the scene and doing their job. So let's not make no an important word in our, in our community outside of negotiation. Do you want to do this? No. But at that point, there's not as much pressure, especially if you're building a dynamic with someone and you're teaching them that they are allowed to say no, they're allowed to say red, they're allowed to have a voice. It's your job as the top dom or any honorific you wanna to use 
to convey to them that their voice matters within your dynamic. We're going to be moving on to our next module in this lecture. So make sure to check it out. I'll see you at the next one. All right. Yeah, the, the color code system is absolutely, absolutely something that you can customize for your dynamic. Mm. All right. I can't believe we're already at an hour. Whew. The first time I did this, it was only 45 minutes. All right, so let's do this. Welcome back to Kinky Talk with me, Kinky Talks with me, Mr. Anderson. Um, understanding the basics of the lifestyle, part one. So we're going to be discussing in this module why we need to protect new people. This is something that is very important. And here it goes. You ever gone to an event? You ever gone somewhere and the host turns around and goes, oh, who are my new people? And people raise their hands. That's a social pressure. You've now outed someone who might not want it to be there. And why don't we want new people identified? Because new people are oh, statistically not only the target of people deliberately, Hold on one second. Sorry about that. They were about to kick us off because we hit an hour. All right. I'm going to restart this. Why we need to... Oh, sorry. Welcome to Kinky Talks with me, Mr. Anderson. Understanding the basics is today's topic of the lifestyle, and we're in the module that talks about why we need to protect new people. Have you ever been in an event where a host says, who are the new people? And people raise their hands. But by raising their hands, they don't realize what they've just done. And the host should know better. What they've just done is identify that they don't understand things. So they could be taught things that are very untrue in our lifestyles and very untrue and dangerous. Such as that if you identify as a submissive or a slave, you must always listen and you don't have a safe word. That's something that's really been shared over the years. Very dangerous. Very, very dangerous. You also have the fact that there are people who deliberately look for new people because they know they can give them misinformation. They know they don't know the right, the, the not necessarily right, but the uh, the proper, the the safer, the uh, educated. They they could they might not know about their risk profile. They might not know a lot. Also, it is a social pressure for someone to suddenly out themselves for the first time. Remember, most people who come into the community might not be necessarily new. They might have been in the lifestyle longer than they've been in the community and have only come to the community because they want to meet like-minded people. Maybe they're looking for a new partner. There's a lot that can go wrong by making someone new and noticed. We don't want to do that at events. We want to make sure that everyone feels safe when they are part of our lifestyle. That's it. That's the goal. When you're pointing people out as being new, you are making them potential target. Uh, you're making it so people will try to take advantage of them, and you're stripping something away from them. And let me tell you, if you ask someone who's new, they'll raise their hand. They didn't know that they're going to be under these types of things. They won't know that someone is now potentially looking at them just because they can take advantage of them. And they also might not be ready to share information because it is so intimidating. A lot of people just showed up after going through the vanilla life where they have been talked about in a bad way, have been told that they're bad people, and now they're being fully exposed to the entertainment of a group. We need to do better. That is not okay. All right. We're going to go with Name That Predator now. Welcome back to Kinky Talks with me, Mr. Anderson, as we're trying to understand the basics of the lifestyle. And in this module, we're going to be talking about Name That Predator. One of the worst things I hate about the community, and I've hated this since the beginning, is that they are hush-hush with when there's a consent violation or an abusive person within our communities. As a matter of fact, the site that most of us go to that's about life and FET, isa.com, 
happens to have a rule that you can't actually name someone who's violated your consent. You can't name who the predators of the communities are. You can't speak up about bad people by using their name. You can give the story, but you don't want to give the name. Now, this comes from one particular reason, and that is to protect predators, protect their friends, let people get away with it. We need to break that in our communities. We need to demand, as a matter of fact, that from now on, when someone knows that someone is dangerous in the community, they must say so. I am not suggesting doing this on Facebook. I'm not trying to suggest that you bring attention to them in your local community outside of kink. I am saying you should do this with your kink community so we can all know who the dangerous people are. And I've seen this go back and forth where someone is identified as dangerous and then there's so many people who will defend them. Well, I don't know definitively. No, I don't know this. And this wound up leading to a problem with a partner of mine who was actually um, heard the rumors, thought the person was okay because a friend of ours was actually involved with them and allowed them themselves to be suspended by this person. And in the middle of being suspended, this person was drinking. Not not very happy, but I stayed and watched the whole thing to make sure. And um, I did a little bit of impact while my play partner was suspended. And they had an issue with circulation and something feeling numb. And I told the person, hey, um, can you come over here? And I waved them over. They came over and I said, my... Um, they are complaining about some numbness in their hand. Uh, she, uh, she needs to come down. They need to come down. And uh, the gentleman said to me, oh, we'll just give her a minute. And I said, listen, sir, you can take her down or I can cut her down. Your call. And then suddenly he started untying. And just a few weeks later, we found out that this person's allegations were all true. Community does not communicate what it needs to communicate. We need to change the culture. I don't care how we got here. I only care that we leave this point and we make communities more supportive, more connective, and more geared towards protecting those within the community. This is something that needs to stop and we should be able to name people who are predatory. We should name consent violators and we should have these bigger conversations. Now, with that said, do I think we need to cancel every person who ever has a consent violation? No, as a matter of fact, I think we need to re-educate people because if we can change someone from being a consent violator who can talk about how they violated others' consent and do so in a way that helps us all learn moving forward, then that can help a lot of people grow and continue on their journeys and maybe stop things because some we don't talk about enough when people violate and people come from the vanilla world where it's fuck around and find out we need to teach them when you enter our world we don't fuck around we ask even for kissing we don't want to have those really big romantic moments we want to have those really sexy moments when you ask someone my God, I want to taste your lips. Would it be okay if I press mine against yours? Or can I kiss you? You look so amazing today. And we also have to teach that when someone gets a no and they feel rejected, they need to calm the fuck down. They need to breathe and understand when someone communicates something with you, you don't have a right to be mad at them. They told you something. Respect it and move on with your life. Because if you don't, you act like a, a well... A douchebag, I guarantee you, they'll never kiss you more than likely. But if you act like a good person and you earn their trust, that kiss might be on its way. Or at least that person will never feel funny about you. Might become your friend and might be someone who talks to a partner later going, no, they respected everything about what I said to them. They're an amazing person. I would definitely suggest that you go for them if you're interested. So, let's be more honest with ourselves. Let's talk about how we can stop consent violations. And let's make a safer world for us all. We're going to move on to our next module now. I'm almost out of water. Luckily, I think we're coming to the end of this. So here we go. Kinky, talk with, kinky Talks with Mr. Anderson. That's me. We're understanding the basics of the lifestyle. In this module, we're going to talk about drugs and consent. And this is going to be really simple. It's so probably going to be our quickest module. If you take any type of drug or alcohol, you are no longer legally able to consent. That's the law. Most places. So there, as a top and a 
and uh, Dom, you should understand that by doing this, you're risking potential legal action against you because they can't consent and you have to get that in your mind. If you're someone who thinks, oh, if I get this girl a drink or if I get this guy a drink, maybe they'll be more willing to do the things I want to do. That's a predatory behavior. You need to stop it immediately. We also need to stop being friends with people who violate others' consent in a planned chalkboard way, like taking them to bars. We need to stop excusing bad behaviors. We need to understand that drugs also not only impair judgment, which might allow someone to, to be talked into something they don't want to do, but it also impairs feeling. So doing something with BDSM, you could really hurt someone and they might not even know it. They might say, hit me harder, and you think they're really into it. But meanwhile, they honestly can't feel it because of a substance I'm not going to lecture you. You're all adults. You're going to do what you're going to do, but I'm just giving you the pure facts. Alcohol, pot, or anything else can diminish how you feel as a submissive and can put yourself in danger. And if that's how you like to play continuously, you're also putting your partner in danger because if something did happen and you wound up in a hospital, and even if you would tell them you consented, if you were drunk, if you were high, they might still press charges. And if you are a dominant and a top and you're trying to use drugs to get something or just playing with someone who's on drugs, you're risking your freedom because they cannot consent. Even if they've been your partner, your wife, your slave or anything like that, if something went wrong, it could fall on you. That has to be in your risk profile. And if it's someone new, especially, oh my God, are you risking something? Because they might have wanted it in the moment and wake up the next day and realized you used alcohol to get them to say it and press charges on you. Be smart. Don't play under the influence. Stay tuned for our next module. All right, kids. We're getting there. I promise we're getting there. All right, here we go, the next module. Welcome back to Kiki Talks with Mr. Anderson. Who's me? This is Understanding the Basics of the Lifestyle. We're going to be talking about in this module, outing venues. And how can you out a venue? Let's first go over the basics with outing a venue. Most venues are at pre-established locations for the most part. And they are probably publicly well-known or even on Google. So if you're making an event page to have an event and you have their permission, of course, to do it there, you should be asking if you're allowed to publish their address. Every venue gets to make that decision. No matter how public you think they are, you definitely need to. As far as a location that might be kind of a gray area, like where you do a, a lunch or an, a munch or an educational class, like let's say a Publix, not Publix, I'm sorry, Panera Bread. You could do it at a Publix because some of them do have little areas to eat, but I would suggest like a Panera Bread, something with a, a, either a, a part of the room where it can be isolated from the general audience, like a little cove, or you could do it in an area where uh, there's actually a private room. Um, Dunkin' Donuts used to have that, Starbucks, some of them have that little area. Panera Bread's good because they have outdoor places you could do these things. So those are all great things. You might not want to put that address though on um, a post um, on a site about lifeandfat.com. Um, you might not want to do that because you might wind up kind of outing it where someone might like tell that you're using that or try to make trouble, or even just someone who works there would find out and don't doesn't want that. You have to be mindful. Telling people I'll tell you the day before is perfectly fine, especially now that you can have discussions where only people see it. Now, if you're doing it at someone's house, because we have house parties, and it's not your house, you should never post an address without absolute certainty from that person that it's okay. There was a recent incident in a community that I'm part of where a person haphazardly posted an address. Not only was it the right address, but it was also an address that was not supposed to be shared publicly. Now, the neighbors of this individual could have people driving up on their lawn looking for something that they will never find at this place because of 
carelessness because they didn't ask because they didn't consider privacy and they didn't ask about consent. Can I do this? No, they just did it because they're lazy. Do not be that person. When it comes to venues, protect the venues, protect your locations. And also another reason to not publicly display where you're going to be is you can't control who's going to be there. Even if your event is open, knowing people who are showing up is better than randomly having it open because that might attract people that you otherwise wouldn't want at your event and causing you an awkward situation while at the event. All right, do we get it? Just be careful. What we talk about, what we do, very often can be conceived as illegal. I don't agree with it because there's UFC training camps, boxing camps, all these things. I think that if you're doing it with a consenting adult, it should be legal. But we have to be mindful. Not everyone sees it that way. And if you are in a public place, please be on your best behaviors. Don't be over loud and certainly don't scream things that are inappropriate because you'll just bring notice to the venue and your local community and it could cost you a venue and if not a tail going home at night. And trust me, you don't want one of those. Stay tuned for our next module, Privacy Issues. What is it, 401? Here we go. Privacy Issues is our next module in Kinky Talks with me, Mr. Anderson, understanding the basics of the lifestyle. Privacy issues. Now, this is one of those things that really is important to me. When we join a community and we're around other people, we have to protect their privacy. I have had my privacy violated. You could see it on this channel or ask me about it later. I don't want to go off on it, but I can tell you that when your private information is put out there, it becomes very dangerous. You could lose custody battles. You could lose your job. There is so much. If you're a member of the community, do not talk about the people in your community with strangers ever without the permission of the actual person you're about to talk about. If you want to talk about a scene they did, you don't have to attach a name. You shouldn't gossip about your friends. You shouldn't spread information. You shouldn't talk about people, even if they've publicly said it to you in the community. Our communities aren't exactly public. The information that you're learning can be shared as far as information of the bigger um, community and talking to each other about that and educational things you learn. Sure, please do share that, but you don't have to tell people uh, where so-and-so works or where so-and-so lives or they're at this place or they do this. Um, keep it to yourself. A lot of times, none of you are even using your real names for specific reasons. You've taken um, monikers and, as it were, pen play names. So people can't easily find where you are. And this also goes with privacy. If you see someone from the community in public, do not go up to them. Don't. Especially if they're with someone. But even if they're not, don't go up to someone. Don't assume they're going to be okay with it. Don't assume they want to see you. A lot of times we have separation between that part of our life and this part of our life. So keep privacy as what it's supposed to be a very important aspect of a person and do not violate it by doing dumb things like sharing information. And if someone ever comes to your community causing trouble asking to vet someone, do not tell them where that person lives. Do not tell them about that person's family. You're just going to cause trouble for your community and yourself. There are bad people out there that you need to protect your community with. And if you have a question, your first question goes to the person they're asking about. Not talking to the person randomly approaching a community asking about someone. There was a, a quick recap. There was a situation where people on this very app thought they had the right to decide what everyone can teach. I have more experience that... All the ones that tried to come and start trouble for me, but one decided it was okay to go around two blocks to try to find information about me. Now, what they were looking for was a got you moment, which they never found because there wasn't one. But the things that got exposed were very, very dangerous for this person to have and then spread, and issues came up because of what they spread. So if you do that, it's outing. If you out someone's privacy, it, and that's what it really is. Outing is a form of a privacy issue. So outing includes privacy issues. Telling anyone that 
in the public sphere or sharing that information publicly, especially if you know someone who knows them, you're outing someone and you're endangering them. Privacy matters. Don't out someone. Have someone's consent before you tell their secret. I want you from this moment on watching this video, consider that a secret fucking identity. When you see them in the, uh, the kink circles, that is, the, they are the kinky superhero that you know. But if you know their alter ego, or if you find out who they are through a Facebook, because sometimes we get that, these algorithms are sneaky. If you figure that out, or if you find out where they work, or you see something, or you know someone in between, it is your responsibility to keep that superhero secret identity, the vanilla identity secret. We good? You get it? Fantastic. Join us for our next module, which is, let's teach how to prevent consent violations by educating the violators, not the victims. All right, all right, all right. We're almost there, kids. We're almost there. Exciting, exciting. 405. Let's do it again. Welcome to Kinky Talks with me, Mr. Anderson. Let's talk about understanding the basics of the lifestyle with this particular module, which is let's teach how to prevent consent violations by educating the violators, not the victims. In this community, we always kind of talk about, and I hate to put it in any other way, but you'll understand this. What were you wearing? What did you do? And this is when we're talking to people who feel like their consent's been violated or something's happened to them. Did you negotiate? Did you vet them? Whoa. Pump the brakes. It's a lot of blame you're throwing on someone who don't deserve it. Why don't we ever go straight to the predators or talk about the predators or name the predators? Why don't we talk about the damage that these predatory behaviors do, these violations do, and how they affect people for a lifetime? Why don't we talk about the fact that we can easily teach people, Dipe, did I ask permission? And tell them if you didn't ask permission, you don't belong in our lifestyle. Forget about saying no that we covered in an earlier module and saying they don't belong. No, no can be a difficult world. What's not difficult is to not do something. To violate someone's consent, you have to take an action. I cannot stress that enough. And we're going to talk about this right now. This came up in my community. So let's Let's talk about consent violations really quickly. And unlike other people, I actually have permission from the persons, uh, the person who had their consent violated. There was a nudist sort of beach, I don't know, remember if it was a party or a gathering, but it happened. And this one person, who I've now found out did this to multiple people and have made multiple people feel uneasy, but this particular person wrote about their experience on this naked person throwing themselves onto the him. And he turned a certain way to kind of have it, like, not be as awkward as it was going to be. And a educator decided to, go in a live event down here, a, a munch, literally tried to call this person out without asking them, without inviting them, saying they were wrong because there's ways to stop people from hugging you. Sure, you could punch them, but no one's going to like that. Now, they didn't say that. I'm being facetious in this moment because this really upsets me. They said, you can stick your hand out. Now, a few things on that. First off, you've been trained to hug people since you were a child. People put their arms out. What do you do? You react to it. Because when you were a kid, you were kept getting told more than likely to hug someone. And before you can even get it, you're hugging a person and it's awkward, unless you're like me, who doesn't like hugs. And I kind of stand off it, so people often ask me, but not everyone has this scary dog privilege. So some people feel is almost obligated to actually hug a person. We don't want that. We want everyone to understand that if you want to hug someone, that's on you to ask permission. Did I ask permission? Dyke, we're going to go over this all the time. If you did not ask permission, you are wrong. And especially if you're throwing yourself on someone, and especially if you're naked. No one wants a naked person thrown on them. If the, You know, it's fine. It's awkward, right? Unless you know that person and you might be okay with it. More than likely, if you're not in a dynamic with them, that's going to be kind of weird for most people. There's nothing wrong with nudists, but they have to understand, and they often do, that that's uncomfortable for certain people. And the perfect example I could get for you, and this would get instantly in tune, if a, like a, an older male, like we'll call them in their 40s to 60s, completely naked, ran up to a younger 
community member, let's say that they're 20, in their 20s, young 20s, and threw themselves and hugged a woman. We'd all have a bit different conversation, wouldn't we? And we have to make that idea right there, the standard. It's not okay to throw our naked bodies on, naked bodies on other people without getting consent. Are you okay hugging? And even if you're clothed, you should ask. If you're going to touch another human being, ask permission. It's not hard. Hugs are not guaranteed. You showing up to a social event doesn't mean you have to kiss anyone or hug anyone or be spanked. And these aren't even that public, mind you. That was, I know that was one of those things, you know, and someone in the, the chat, and I'll, I'll give him a shout out for this one because it's great, so, says, in quotes, are you okay with hugs? It's not hard. And because I'm a scary dog, people literally ask me, hey, can I hug you? But other people, they just wrap their arms around. And I have a friend who would hate hugs, doesn't want hugs for me. And I'm chill with that. It doesn't matter to me. I don't take it anyway. I don't care. I don't like hugs from everybody. That's fine. We're okay to have our own spaces. We're okay not to be programmed dummies for you to touch. Did I ask permission? Let's teach people they have to ask before they do anything. It's time. Because we keep talking about how submissives and how people should protect themselves. No. Let's stop making it their fault that they're taken advantage of and touched. And let's make it the fault of the person doing it. And let's make sure they know, dipe. Did I ask permission? Explain, consent can only be gotten when information is given and agreed to and risk profiles are done. Even for a hug, you don't know. Maybe they're a germaphobe. Maybe they don't like touching people. Maybe people have touched them inappropriately. It doesn't matter. All that matters is you let them make the decision. End of story. Let's stop blaming the people who are victims, who have their consent violated, who have things done to them that are icky and not okay because no one asked permission. And let's put the blame where it belongs on the people doing the things they shouldn't be doing. And let's hold educators accountable when they say dumb things like it's the responsibility of a person having their consent violated to somehow stop it. No! It will always be the fault of another person. I don't care. I don't care if they're a risk taker. I don't care if there's someone who seems to always get themselves in trouble. Because the ultimate goal is this. We should live in a world where no one's ever taken advantage of and people should always be asking permission. As long as we don't live in that world, it doesn't mean it's the victim's fault. It doesn't mean it's the people having things done to them's fault. It just means that we need to educate people that responsibility has to fall on the violators. Join us for our next topic in our next module, which will be kink shaming. All right. We got, we got three topics to go. Pretty excited. Let's do this. Uh, 4.30. My name is Mr. Anderson, and I am host, the host of Kink Talks. And this is the series, Understanding the Basics of the Lifestyle. This is part one of that series, which we're talking about different modules today. And today's module that we're talking about at this particular moment is kink shaming. You know what? We all come from the vanilla world. We've all heard stupid news people talk about Fifty Shades of Grey. We've seen our depiction in media. We've seen us torn down, made jokes of, and we've had people say disgusting things to us. When we join the community, we should all know better. So here we go. I'm going to give you an education. First off, if you kink shame, you're dangerous to this community. I don't care if you like it or not. I don't care what it is. If it's age playing, it upsets you too fucking bad. It's two consenting adults doing something to each other. Respect that. Remember, you're in a space where you can be accepted. Don't make it so other people can't be accepted. Remember, your kink is not my kink. We've lived by that for decades now. You, mileage may vary, meaning we're all different and have different experiences. Kink condemning, where you could try to condemn a whole kink and tell people it's dangerous. You don't belong in the lifestyle then. You don't belong in a community. 
That's what it is because you're not being acceptive of other people. It doesn't matter what you like. It doesn't matter what flavors you like. It doesn't matter what toppings you like. All that matters is that if you want to be part of this community, you be accepting. You keep it to yourself. Don't even tell people. You want to have a private conversation that will never get out, you can have that. But when you're around anyone else, you don't say dumb things. And here's why. You never know who has a kink. And I've done this. I'm guilty. I own it. I have said dumb shit. A lot of it based on the fact I didn't understand it. And some of it based on the fact that I purely don't like it. Or there are things about it that I just am not okay with. But in the end of the day... In the end of the day... and it, It's just this simple. We don't. We don't. We don't. We don't attack our community members... We, uh, we have that enough in the middle of the world. Stop it. Just because you don't like it doesn't mean you can talk down about it. Maybe, just maybe, you should take more time asking about and learning about it. And you might understand it better. Remember, keep your fucking opinions to yourself if they're negative. And when someone asks you, well, do you like this? Instead of saying, ew, no, turn around and say, well, oh, that's not my flavor. And let it be. Our next module will be Understanding Maybe. Oh, two more. I just got told I've been doing this 90 minutes. Um, yesterday I did this all in 45 minutes. I don't know why it's doubled in time, but I hope that you're enjoying it. All right, so here we go. Welcome back to... Kinky Talks. With me, Mr. Anderson, as we're learning the understanding, the basics of the lifestyle in this series. We're on part one, and we're at the module for understanding, maybe. And this was something when I did this uh, just yesterday in a live format, similar to this, but on a Zoom, with a smaller group. We talked about, under we didn't talk about understanding, maybe, and I want to talk about this. I want you from this day on to understand that when someone says maybe to you, take it as a no. Take it as a no that you can ask maybe later. And what later should be is 24 hours later. Do not, if someone says maybe, ask them again. You've asked them, you've informed them, you've told them what you want to do. Unless you're in a dynamic with them and they say, ask me later, maybe, don't ask them again. Don't pressure people into playing with you or guilt someone into playing with you maybe is a no it means i heard you i'm not saying yes i'm saying maybe now maybe they will change their mind and come talk to you and leave that door open so when someone tells you maybe and that's the end of the conversation because they've said as an example hey do you want to play tonight oh maybe walk away leave it alone if they want to, they will come find you. You telling them about how bad your week is, how your puppy died, how you have a disability, how you have tr trouble with game. You trying to guilt someone into something is coercion. It is ugly. Don't do it. It's that simple. It really is. Understanding maybe is not hard. Maybe is a very nice way to let you down. It is someone who is not saying no to you because no can be dangerous to say. Yeah, it can be, because then you might follow them around with 10 other people who aren't getting the point that maybe is a nice way to say no, or at least no at that moment. Let them come back to you. It is not their fault that they instantly don't want to do something, and it is not your job to badger them for them to do something. I hope, I pray, I really, really, really hope that you get what I'm saying. And I'm not trying to be rude to anyone. I am seriously uh, hoping that everyone gets what I'm saying. This is about making this lifestyle enjoyable for us all. And by you being a person who hears maybe and backs off, you'd be amazed that you might actually get more respect in the community for being the person, for being someone who actually listens and respects other people. That will go further than anything else you can do. This is the end of part one of Kink Talks with Mr. Anderson. 
We will be having an Understanding the Basics of the Lifestyle Part 2 coming up. Please send us what you want covered in the next Understanding the Lifestyle Part 2 lecture, and uh, we'll cover it. Um, we might not have as many topics as this first one did. We might limit it to a smaller amount. I appreciate all of you who watched all of the different ones. If you watch this on YouTube and you watch the full ones, sorry about all the breaks in between. Uh, thank you for TikTok for not actually ending us at any particular point and allowing that. And I'm going to go on to read comments now. So if you're watching the TikTok shorts, this is where we leave each other. But now for comments made. Uh, and Zycom, or actually, I'm not going to actually read names. Well, if this is your comment, you should know it. Sorry about that. And I didn't even say it right, so maybe that's good. So I was, let's see. Is this the first comment? Okay, I'm going all the way. To, to everyone who said hi, I say hi back instantly. Uh, yeah, I don't think this is going to show us every comment, and I'm sorry about that. I think there's just a limit to the where the comments are. Let me see if I can see this. I'm going to take this down now. Uh, let's see. Oh, my back it hurts. I did not hurts. I did not expect. Sorry if that interrupted. Let me see if I can get the comments up. Um, no, I'm sorry. I don't see, and I don't think it'll let. I thought there was a way just to see comments. I'm sorry, but I'm not. Oh, wait, 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 wait. I might have found it. I might have found it. Okay, here. I think it, well, it says live. So it makes me go this way. I'll try to get as many as I can. I do know someone who is in here. Um, my actual editor showed up at one point, and uh, I don't see their comments. So I know I'm not getting them all, so I apologize already for that. Someone said that they were lost, and they're snoozing. This just goes to the disrespect of some people. Um, Sorry about that for anyone who saw that. If I, if you said hello, I say hello back right now. Um, sorry, I'm scrolling through. Because it shows me every person who joined. And I think we had about 500 to 600 people join. So there's a lot of just joined. They ate up our comments section. Thank you for the clapping. Um, here we go. Only approach if specifically pre-consented. Um, I'm not sure in what reference you mean that, but it, it's good advice to always have consent. So there's nothing wrong with that. All right, someone, let's see, I'm trying to say, am I okay with hugs? Oh, that one. Yeah, I know what that is. Yes. Are you okay with hugs? Great one. Um, that's asking permission to hug someone. Love it. Great energy. Um, and they say that I'm a big hugger, but not from everyone at every time. And remember, I have a free hugs and spank shirt that I often wear. And I've given strangers hugs. And I do that as a gimmick and as a way to talk about fetish and consent. Um, I don't particularly like hugs from strangers, but it's a, it is a good way to kind of spread that those of us in the lifestyle aren't inherently dangerous. And we do have a sense of humor, and we are willing to do that. And yes, I get asked to spank people, and it's mostly men. Not that I'm complaining. Someone clapped, but then I got the mystery box, so I don't know what they wanted, but I did see that. Let's see. Uh, I can't tell you how many times I've stopped talking to someone because they kept persisting. Nothing worse with that. Oh, can I? Can I? Will you? Will you? And I'm sure at one point in my life I've come on too strong and just wanted attention that's human fix it though make sure you're not being that person mild neurodivergent self would like it to better understand labels like brat top um that's so hard because it's become so subjective now um, for a lot of the labels and this is why i think too many labels are dangerous it is something that I will look towards doing something when I feel like the labels, and now called also honorifics, um, some of them are so specific that I find it almost impossible to fully understand any of it, and I have to ask someone, and there's not a danger in asking someone why they identify that way. 
But understand, when you're putting a label that's just specific to you, you're going to have to have the patience to explain that label. And I think that's it. And with that, I think that I'm going to sign off and say thank you to everyone who tuned in. I appreciate it. Look forward to this being uploaded in different segments over the next few weeks because I'm sure we have like 10 segments. And uh, if you have more questions, join our Discord again on the main page for you on YouTube. Um, I hope you enjoyed this video. And uh, I will see you all at our next lecture. Stay kinky, my friends!